Welcome back to the Finsiders here on a Monday evening. Greg Likens, please be joined in studio by John Offerdahl, former All-Pro linebacker with the Miami Dolphins. John, great to see you here in the studio. How are you doing? Good to be in the studio. Yeah. It's like the playing field for me these days. Yes, and uh, you know, Happy New Year to you and, and your you. family. As, uh, this is our first show in studio here of 2015. Dolphins just uh, wrapped up their 2014 season, hitting the offseason. Take us back to your playing days and going into the offseason. What was the offseason like from a player's perspective when you were playing? All right, so back in, like, I played from 1986 to 1993. <clears throat> Gosh, what is that? Almost 20, 30 years ago? Yeah! <laughs> so uh, back then, you know, the, the game was changing. Uh, it was changing from a almost a part-time job in the 70s where Dick Anderson had to have an insurance job to supplement his income to the 80s where you, it was a full-time job and they were starting to make it a full-year job. Uh, and then in the 90s, they, they literally started demanding their players to stay in town during the offseason. So I was in that transition. Free agency came in 1993. Um, but by far, it's become a science now. And how uh, teams look at every step, every second, every moment of a player's life and how to engineer that to create the most productivity, uh, teams are looking at that now. Um, and uh, so it's much more demanding. You know, back... In 1990, I started a bagel store. I started a business. These days, for a player to actually do that uh, almost has become impossible because of the demands of the full-time 365 a year. Yeah, it's, it's certainly interesting. Yeah, I hadn't had enough time in the offseason to do that, and obviously you've been successful with that. You look at the Dolphins' season, and defensively, since that's your specialty, the first 10 games or so of the season, this was statistically one of the best defenses in all of football. In the last six games, last four games specifically, they gave them an average of 35 points a game. The run defense was giving up mm. huge yardage totals. When you see a decline like that in the latter part of the season, what needs to change for them this offseason to improve in 2015? Right, so that was the big surprise because the whole year we had faith in our defense, um, the run defense being the core of our defense, uh, good strong corners, um, uh, and all of a sudden, come the last month of the year, uh, things started falling apart. In Denver, they started gaining yards on the ground. Um, the next couple games, a couple 200, almost 300-yard games. <clears throat> the last game, the, the, the pass defense opening up, and... Uh, you know, I've gone through that in the past, too. I've been part of teams that were 6-0, and 6-0, and 8-3 and going into the second half of our season, only to fall apart or, or, or diminish our quality of play towards the end of the year. Um, it's interesting. So I look at the factors and what happened. Um, <clears throat> tough to put your finger on any one thing, but um, one of the things that affected, I think, us when we played in the 80s and the 90s was that we, we conditioned so hard in this humidity that I, I actually thought that was a factor towards the end of the year. We became tired physically, run, dra run down, drained. Nowadays, they don't do that as much. They try to reserve and preserve the body. Uh, so you can't use that as an excuse. But what I do think that happens in team mentality, specifically football, is that it's such a team-oriented game. And when there is a crack in, in the defense, let's say, and they expose a certain part of the defense, the run game, which we thought was a strength, what happens in the minds of players individually is they, they try to overcompensate. They try to do more than maybe what they should, and in doing so, they open up their own responsibilities to be critiqued. Um, and, you know, it's a, ca a common cliche to kind of farm your own ground, take care of your own responsibilities, and as part of a team, you'll come together strong. But uh, a lot of good athletes will try to overcompensate for maybe an error uh, next to them, and in doing so, really open up a door of weakness uh, to a team. And it, I think it really hurt also when Finnegan, we lost Finnegan as a corner for a couple games. And, and that opened up, um, you know, potentially a little concern with our corner strengths, uh, which all of a sudden opens up our pass rush, which opens up a run defense. And those things can fall apart if you don't have the confidence and, uh, uh, of a team defense that's going to uh, rightfully take its stake as a very top defense in the league and I think we are a defense in the league like that but we lost our confidence is that is that a long answer to a short question no it's a, it's good though to get some insight because that's going to be one of the the big questions this entire offseason the Dolphins fans hope to get answered yeah. in next season so it's good to get your perspective on that John offered all former Pro Bowl linebacker from the Dolphins joining us here and John uh, one guy who's been a hot button topic ever since he was drafted number three overall was Deion Jordan who 
He came into the league. He was just a pure pass rusher. And mm-hmm. this year, a lot of people were calling for him to maybe play a hybrid role, pass rush, and a linebacker. They never found a real niche for him yet. But I think this offseason, they've got some big plans for him. When you see a guy who's 6'6", athletic, can run, but can also get after the passer, ideally, how would you utilize a guy with that kind of talent? Right, so number one pick, I, I forgot where he was picked. Top ten, I think. And number three. In the league. Yeah. Number three. Yeah. <laughs> Top three. Uh, <laughs> high expectations. Hasn't been on the field as much as all the fans and myself would like. Uh, really uh, needs to produce. Time's kind of up. I mean, these days it's a young man's game. Back when I played, if you started as a rookie, you were, you were, you were certainly the exception. Nowadays, you're expected to start as a rookie. As you're in prime time. Um, so he's got to find his gift and his niche on this team. Uh, if it's uh, being that unique player that can both run, uh, rush the passer and, and drop back and be a, a deterrent for somebody to throw over or, or to defend a pass, we, I don't know what that is yet. And uh, I don't, you know, I, I guess the team doesn't know what it is either, or they would have already defined that role for him. He needs to mature and find that spot fast because as a team, we've invested a lot of them. And I, I know from a fan standpoint, we want to see productivity. Yes, for sure. All right, a couple more for you. This Dolphins team under Joe Philbin, 7-9, and 8-8, eight and 8-8 eight and eight and eight in his three years. And we've seen, especially this season, so many close games against playoff teams that the Dolphins weren't able to make that final play or two to really seal the deal. What's it going to take for this entire organization to take the next step and get to the playoffs next year? Yeah. So it would have been great last game for him to win, so that it would be a progression, one game a year of improvement. Certainly we're thinking the next year, 10-6, and six, puts us in the playoffs. Um, but I tell you, uh, apart from that, that last disappointment, we do have a team with a foundation. And I firmly believe that if you shake up the framework, the organizational structure of this team, you're going to start again. And uh, I'm glad the commitment was made with the head coach because I believe he can take us to the next level. And that, that confidence and momentum is critical for a team to carry forward into its future. Yes, and uh, so we're looking forward to see what, what happens there. Speaking of head coaches, I want to talk to you about your former head coach, Don Shula, celebrated his 85th birthday yesterday and uh, saw a lot of things oh, written oh. about that. And you've got a cool story about his 80th birthday. Tell us about that. Yeah, so Coach Shula, for all of us players who played for him, uh, you know, he was, he was God. You know, right next to God is Coach Shula, <laughs> the son of God. Um, anyways, uh, in playing for him, unbelievable memories. And so in his 80th birthday, which was five years ago, I had the opportunity to invite him over to my house. Now, here's Coach Shula. Comes over to my house. We do a couple grill videos, gridiron griller videos um, together. And you can see them on YouTube. Just, you know, look up gridiron griller. And he does a steak, uh, Marianne. And he also does a, a porterhouse steak video with me. And we, we had such a great time, him and Dave Shula, just pitching uh, the, their Shula Steakhouse. Um, but at the end of those videos, I, I took an opportunity to surprise him on behalf of my career and all the careers around me and presented him a, a birthday cake and uh, just had the opportunity to just celebrate a little one-on-one or on a video. Yes. Uh, and just really enjoyed that moment. Uh, got to surprise, and you know, there's still a coaching element and, and a player element in our relationship. So, in my mind, he he's still the head coach, and I play for the head coach. <laughs> yes, and I I thought it was great. We got to see your uh, singing skills on display as well. So I a I birthday. actually yeah. even sang a happy <laughs> birthday. I didn't do the Marilyn Monroe on him, but I did the Johnny O on him. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did. And by the way, and you just mentioned that if you just go to YouTube and type yeah. in John Offerdahl, uh, Don Shula grill and you'll find the videos right there yeah. exactly and they're, they're quite comical because you know to see shula outside of the the football field and into the kitchen and outdoor grill is something to be cherished for me personally and just definitely enjoyed and shared with others yes and i encourage everybody to check that out john thanks so much for joining us here on the show it's great to be on here greg yeah thanks always- you